कुछ और जमाना कहता है कुछ और है जिद मेरे दिल की मैं बात जमाने की मारू या बात सुनू अपने दिल की कुछ और जमाना कहता है नमस्कार माय नेम इज प्रकृति I am a doctoral student in geography, a daughter, a cat rescuer, a singer, a dancer, a photographer, a writer, an innovative cook, and an amateur at many other things. I am led by a burning curiosity and fed by a sensitive and passionate heart. It would be useful to call me an outlier, someone who doesn't fit in any neat category. I'm not the typical nerd PhD students are imagined as, and I'm not a professional artist purely an animal or community worker i am however any of these or more as my circumstances command in the society designed to systematically disempower individual spirit and action i aim to serve interests larger than my own by accessing power that is higher than my own let me tell you a little bit about me i was born to a special family an inspiration to many and my guiding light my mother is a professor in literature musician and a warrior in personal and professional life she cannot see with her eyes like the most of us but her heart beyond the visual world my father on the other hand is sighted having lost his father at a very young age he's a, he's a self-made banker a multifaceted homemaker and a photographer principled and compassionate he is a pillar in my life being their only child and daughter has profoundly nurtured a deep sensitivity in me as i walk with my mother navigating through buildings roads difficult terrains across rivers and stairs in the lobbies airports trains stations ruins to museums amusement parks and movie theaters i have to prepare her describe to her and think ahead for her to communicate not just with words but my touch the turns the drops the heights and the distances how to place the ankle where to leap or to jump or take baby steps as the terrain demands all of this at every step as i did that in since childhood i could develop an ability to perceive the needs of others even when they couldn't communicate them by stepping into their shoes into witting their fears helplessness and vulnerability and plunging in fully with all that i could offer in the moment in many ways these experiences always keep me grounded neither could i ignore nor rationalize the pain of the innocent and the most vulnerable the animals young children and the differently abled have rarely anything to do with the greed and thirst of this world that we inhabit yet they suffer at the fringes at our disposal something about it deeply deeply pains me it seems like injustice of the highest order there i believe i draw my loyalty to the cause of the most innocent whether it is supporting the differently abled mentoring the young or rescuing strays when faced with a challenge or an opportunity on top of a crazy schedule of an aspirational young researcher daughter with home responsibilities and assistance work for my mother i am led by the answer to these questions who needs my service the most at this moment whose life can i make significantly better whose pain matters the most now the answer guides me promptly and i take the plunge with all that i can offer the all in this sentence matters and probably the most it is not a decision purely of the heart i take my mind along it is in fact the most efficient way to do it in that one moment when you plunge in you allow someone to have the chance at a life equally privileged as yours and yourself to touch the contours of your potential of being a human having touched that space as a human you can do so much be so much and mean so much to those around you
In this talk, I hope that my attempt at being as raw as possible in revealing my world, even though it makes me a bit uncomfortable, would give you access to your own inner world in some meaningful way. The journey to the current stop of my professional voyage has been anything but linear or strategic. I have only chosen opportunities that invigorate me, whether it was the choice to pursue humanities in high school, eco economics at LSR, environmental economics at Terry School, or teach ethics to engineers, conducting even critical interdisciplinary research on water, or beginning on a PhD program in geography. Throughout, my choices of subjects, institutions, and mentors has been based on finding a meaningful and significant purpose, an alignment between my skills, sensitivities, and sensibilities, a strong belief that my professional mentors defend my best interests, and a congenial and vibrant environment. Where I stand today, I couldn't ever have without the exceptional and continuing guidance of my mentors from areas as vast as philosophy, geography, economics to public policy, and a slew of opportunities that came my way through them. I wouldn't deny my privilege here. Supported by unconventional values of my parents, I could look beyond my salary for the most part and focus purely on learning. Learning not just about academics and research, but about leadership, teamwork, devoting to a larger cause, an organization, a nation, the world, and upholding one's value and one's truth. I was publishing my research, presenting it, organizing and promoting events while mentoring interns. I wouldn't differentiate between these jobs, but devote myself to, the, to their cause, giving my best and striving for excellence in whatever I did. This approach, I believe, laid the foundation of a love for work and devotion to its cause. I remember harboring a bottomless love for animals since I was very young. My grandfather would bring stray puppies to our home to care for them, and the seven-year-old me would sit for hours caressing them, weeping as I removed ticks stuck to their innocent skin. In a conversation about choosing a topic for my master's thesis, I was asked, what is it you'd like to study? And upon a brief reflection, I responded with a twinkle in my eyes, something to do with animals. After a considered thought, our thesis coordinator, Dr. Noan, advised me to Google search the term virtual water, the water used to manufacture goods right from their cradle to the grave. It was since then that water became a permanent piece in the research puzzles that would energize me. From my love for animals, I nurtured an enchantment for rivers. The journey to rivers from animals, however, entailed several turns and twists. From techno-economic modeling of agricultural water use to micro-level surveys about water and well-being in farming communities and closely engaging with the officials of Indra's hydraulic state on federal water governance, I saw water being understood and made meaning of very differently by different people. This, of course, impacts significantly how water is governed, managed and utilized by each of us. Given the centrality of water, this bears important implications on people and the environment. One way to illustrate the resulting tensions is the damming of rivers. The nature of a river is to flow through hurdles, seasons and topographies. It assimilates fresh water from myriad sources in its catchment, the glaciers, streams, groundwater and lakes, carrying an enriched liquid through its basin, depositing fecund silt and nurturing life of various forms along the way. Flowing keeps it nurturing. However, humans have dammed rivers since the start of civilizations for several practical purposes, like managing floods, storing water against the vagaries of monsoons for irrigation, commerce and drinking, and generating hydropower among others. In doing so, we obstruct and change the course of rivers, displacing life, habitations, and livelihoods. These interventions have large-scale impacts, and the choices they involve are inevitably political, endlessly balanced on a careful scale of ethics and economics. At the Center for Policy Research, or CPR, in New Delhi, I found myself engaging with these questions directly, seeing the other side of water planning, working closely with the Indian Water Ministry's attached offices. 
the quest to uncover deeper and deeper understandings of why certain governance practices prevail, even when faced with intensifying critiques, what makes the discourse on water governance so polarized and dichotomous? And what are ways of intervening this kind of an impasse motivate my doctoral work today? Invoking sensitivity on either side of the impasse by documenting the hitherto undocumented perspectives from a space of compassion and understanding, I am hopeful my work would participate in the transformative power of knowledge with courage and compassion. These varied experiences do not follow a predictable, consistent, or a comfortable path, but they converge beautifully to the current stop of my intellectual journey. It took me over five years, a summer school, research positions at three distinct Indian think tanks, a few publications, and, few, and five teaching semesters at IIT Delhi to arrive at my current doctoral research topic. A topic that fascinates me and is utilizing of my skills, understanding the layers of human behavior, critical thinking, channeling compassion, writing, and research. The inherently transdisciplinary, dynamic, and flexible approaches that characterize the discipline of geography render it well poised to address the kind of research puzzles that deeply energize me and is thus my current disciplinary home. With that, I turn to a recent episode from my personal life. In the middle of 2018, I found myself organizing a concert for my mother at the India Habitat Center in Delhi. From working on the performance proposal, designing invitation cards, posters and flyers, inviting many of Delhi's artist intellectuals by post, email, social media and in person, I was coordinating the entire event comparing in it and accompanying her on Tanpura on stage. While these preparations were ongoing, I was to travel to Austria for work, schedule time on a co-authored book and take classes at IIT. After the concert, I was taking care of my grandfather for an ailment he was suffering from, taking him to the doctor and closely supervising his recovery, drafting my PhD statement, giving the interview to my dream job at CPR and religiously alternating between my dance classes and gym sessions. Amidst it all, on July 31st, 2018, I got a call on my office landline for a kitten getting attacked by crows. Upon immediately going down to see, I saw this tiny ball of fur meowing constantly to call out her mom, who wasn't anywhere in sight. My friend Neha had accompanied me to this rescue mission, and we tried a host of different nooks and, nooks and corners of the Habitat Center complex to leave her with food. Ensure she's safe from vehicles in the parking lot, other animals and excited onlookers, so her mom can return to her. I kept her right outside on a patch of plants and asked the office guard to be watchful of her in the day as she spends it calling out her mother. The best outcome in this case was returning to the natural care of her mother. However, the mother did not show up and I was faced by the choice of leaving her to fend for herself or taking her along to her simple two bedroom apartment with my parents already overwhelmed with two other rescued cats around, the majestic Pihu and a phoenix with special needs. My friend Neha, in her concern for me, advised me against it, but I felt compelled to take her along as I didn't really have a choice. She wouldn't have survived alone like that. Dogs entered the complex at night, and so I had to plunge in to her care in whatever way was possible. With the help of my supportive friends, I got a cardboard box, assembled newspaper shreds, and put Kuhu down in it to be taken care, to be taken around wherever I had to go until I was home feeding her milk around on the way and from our office station. After office, she went to the gym with me and finally came home. The feisty little girl accepted our family with open arms, two big sisters, and the rest is history. I wouldn't say it wasn't frightening. My grandfather needed special attention. I had deliverables at work, an upcoming job interview, PhD ideas to draft, and teaching responsibilities. It was daunting to take on another life's responsibility. What made me choose this was a compelling inevitability. I felt in saving an innocent life, stepping outside my own interests and thereby tapping into a power beyond me. This power, my passion for the meaning and purpose of each of these endeavors and a constant reminder, if not me, then who made it possible for me to multitask in a way that I could accomplish them all. 
I got the job, completed five teaching semesters. My grandfather was back to being hale and hearty, and Kuhu is now a brave little force of nature living her best life. How was this possible? Well, I believe it was my sensitivity that allowed me to perceive more than me and my own goals. The suffering of others can be a powerful motivation to channelize compassion. I could never stop feeling and doing everything from my heart. This love took me to water, ethics, public policy, and now geography. It wasn't easy, rather challenging, slowly and slowly floating away from the shores of economics to the unfamiliar shores of geography. Quite an adventure, but what stayed constant was my commitment to contribute meaningfully and consistently, improving my skills and sharpening my intent, supporting my mother personally and professionally, and rescuing or being rescued, who knows, seven cats with varying needs. Where I stand today, I have no regrets, for I did not ignore the pain of any vulnerable being on my journey. Sensitivity does not weaken you. It opens up channels for new and powerful vibrations to find and enter your being. So don't shut down. Allow this energy to transform you and your journey. Let your heart guide you. Challenge the notion of power as merely masculine, money, muscle, and machines. Embrace the soft and feminine power of empathy and compassion inside you. All of us have it. Choose your heart and compassion over caging deadlines. If you truly love what you're doing, you will find the power to purposefully honor them while contributing immensely to someone else's life on the way. Let intent without sheer self-interest be your guide. Assimilate all of your pain, trauma, and the suffering of others that resonates with you. Ruminate. Prioritize what would you like to do about it. And then channelize it to make this world a little bit more like you dream of it to be. This process has rendered in me a conviction, adaptability, independence, and a kind of fearlessness to go against the grain. Choose the right thing to do according to my own truth and liberated me to reveal my unique gifts even when they did not fit neatly in any conventional category. I promise you a whole new world of power, courage and strength will open up for you, inviting you to participate and you will achieve your definition of success, excellence and fulfillment. I'll end with a few lines from one of my mother's compositions. Rat se to mulakat ho hi chuki, aao mil kar chale, ab sehar se mile, apne ashko ki ginti bahut ho chuki, aao ro ke zakhme chigar se mile. रात से तो मुलाकात हम सुनाते रहे अपनी ही दासता याद करते रहे अपनी दुश्वारिया जिन पे बर्फा किए हादसों के कहर उन घरों से मिले उस शहर को चले रात से तो मुलाकात हम तो करते रहे ख्वाहिशों का गिला कभी ये ना मिला कभी वो ना मिला जिनकी आंखों को ख्वाबों की आदत नहीं जिनकी आंखों को ख्वाबों की आदत नहीं उनकी भी हसरतों की खबर ले चले रात से तो मुलाकात हो ही चुकी आओ मिलकर चले अब शहर से मिले रात से तो मुलाकात धन्यवाद